Hello, this is Mrs. Schlarman, and today we're going to talk about how to make a coil pot. So I'm going to take some earthenware clay and just a chunk, and I'm going to start making actual coils. So I'm squeezing it in my hand, just trying to make like a rough little snake. Then I'm going to start to roll it on the table. When you roll, you don't want to push real hard because that's going to cause flat sides. You also want to make sure that when you roll, the entire coil is rotating all the way around. You don't want to just go short back and forth. You want to make sure you extend it fully so that it coil pushes out. I am also applying pressure and pulling out with it so that I'm pushing the clay out and extending the length of the coil. And as it gets longer, you can use two hands. Just remember that you want to make sure that you're pushing out. Now notice how it's got in kind of one of a flat side. See it's skinnier here and then flat on there. This happens when you apply too much pressure. You can just take the skinny side and kind of flatten it down. And then remember not to push too hard. You want to keep sure that it rotates all the way through and just gently stretching it out. And you can see how my hand is also moving back and forth and changing the length of my coil. So I'm just working it. It's not a real fast process. If you get too much in a hurry, you're going to squish one of your sides of the coils. So here I'm taking this gently out, and as it gets longer, I'm pushing it. So I'm gently kind of lifting, lifting up my hand as I pull it that way and roll it through. And if you notice that there's a thicker part in the coil, that's where you want to put a little bit more pressure onto the coil. How thick do I want my coil to be? You want your coil about the thickness of your pinky. So I can see right here I've got a little bit of a longer area. So as you said, we're going to make a coil pot. So basically we're going to make the vase or the vessel out of coils. So once I have some coils made, I'm going to take my coil and I'm going to start my base of my coil. I'm going to go ahead and switch to some longer one that I've already made. So when I take my coil, the first thing I'm going to do is when attaching is to always score and slip the coil. So what that means is I'm going to make little marks on my coil with a fork and it kind of ends up looking like a bunch of X's as the coil goes around there. Then I'm going to use slip, and slip is basically just really watery down clay. I literally take water in a blender, and then I tear off little pieces of clay, and I blend it up inside of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to coil. So I've got it all scored, and now I want to make that spiral, my first spiral. And you really want to keep it as round and symmetrical as possible. So I'm taking where I have that glue, the slip, on it. And this is going to be the base of my, pen, of my uh, coil vessel. So then what I want to do is I'm going to smear those areas together. Some people like to show the coil, so you can leave the coil. Um, older techniques and how they made their vases wasn't just for decorative, it was more practical. So it being practical, what they did was they definitely smeared the coil back together so that it would have more of a solid container. But in today, a lot of people have a tendency to leave those coils showing for the aesthetic value of it. So what I'm using here is just a popsicle stick. Uh, a lot of people use like a metal rib is what they call it, um, but a popsicle stick will do the job too. Also, some people just use their hands um, when hand building. So you just use your materials that you have available to you. I'm going to go ahead and shape it. So this is my base. All right. 
And then of course I can flip it over and do the same to the other side. I'm gonna smear it together. And I've got these to where no seams. And the reason why slip works like glue is because as you know, as clay dries, it shrinks. Well, the last part to dry is the wettest part of the clay. And slip is basically water, so that's going to be the last area to dry. So now I'm just kind of shaping it. Any shavings I have, I just kind of put over there. I'll recycle it into my lump of clay so that we don't waste. We always want to use everything we possibly can. So I'm smearing this around. I have my nice shape. I turn it over so it doesn't get stuck to the, the canvas tablecloths too much. Okay, now I'm ready to start with my next. So I'm gonna take a coil I have, that I have already rolled out. And you really want your coils to be as unified as possible, meaning the same thickness. You want it the same as your pinky all the way through. If you don't have it unified, your, your, your pot's gonna go up and down as you change it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to score the bottom of my vessel, my coil pot. So I just have that little marks on it. Then I'm gonna take some slip my glue, my watered down clay, and then I'm going to take my first coil and I am going to attach it. Now notice when I get to here, I'm just going to rip that off and I'm going to attach the coil there. Now I probably need to slip some slip in there as well so that it becomes very secure. Okay, so then I'm gonna kind of pinch and push it together. Now one thing you want to watch out is I've got a little bit of a lip here, which is what I want. I don't want it to be right on there. I like that little foot is what they call that right there. And I've got it shaped. You want to try to keep it as round as possible. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use another coil. Okay. Now this time when I make my next coil, I'm gonna be putting it on top, but I don't want the seams to be at the same spot. So wherever my coil is, I kinda of wanna counteract it and put the seam on the other side. So here the coil connected up top, the next coil I'm gonna connect down at the bottom. But before I do that, what do I need to do to my coils? I need to score them, and I need to slip them. So I'm gonna score, and slip. Then I'm gonna take my coil, measure it right about there, okay. okay. Now, if your coil is slightly sliding off like this, your vase is gonna to start to go out. If your coil is brought in, your coil is going to go in. If you direct it directly put it on top of it, okay, this is gonna make it go skinnier, okay? If you make it to where your coil is exactly on top of the other one, it's gonna go vertical, straight up and down like a cylinder. All right, so this one I have slightly off on it, and you wanna work with it as much as you can so that your coils are balanced so you can see how I keep kind of reshaping my circle so that my circle looks as circular as possible. Okay, so I just kind of smooth that down and it's sticking because I got that nice slip on it. Okay, next I'm going to start another one. So the first thing I need to do is score it. So I make these little marks. Okay. Then I'm going to put the slip on it. Then I'm gonna pick up another coil. And don't forget, you also want to score and slip the coil that's attaching to the pre-existing coil. And then I'm gonna take it. And this one maybe, do I wanna go out with it to make more of a bow shape? 
or do I want to make it tighter? Um, it's going to, you have need to think about where it is. And then double check, did I end up putting that where the other seams are? So my first seam is over here. My second seam is over here. My third seam, I, you know what, I'm going to move that and think about my seam being further away. I'm going to put it over there. I'm going to attach some slip there so that I have my other one over here and more secure. So you got to be careful. If you start to slide it and wanting to go out too fast, it's going to fall off and you're going to have holes in your pottery. So what I want to make sure is that I'm not having any holes and that I'm unified and that my circle is nice and airtight. So I've got my, my shape. Now, careful. Don't let your fingers turn into people that start pinching things. You want to be gentle with it. If I squeeze too hard, it's going to cause uh, the coils to get pinched in one area and it won't be symmetrical and balanced as the other areas. So make sure when you're working with your coil pottery that you keep that in mind. All right. So right now you can see the actual coils. Okay, so let's look at it from this side. So I smooth this entire base here, and then I have these coils still visible. You don't want any of those holes to be shown, so I'm just kind of making sure I don't have any holes in my coils. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm probably going to be running out of time. So how do I store this till the next art class? Well, first of all, you want to be very careful with it, okay? You want to get to a nice stopping point, okay? Then when the timer goes off, we have to clean up. You're going to get a bag, like a Walmart bag. This Walmart bag, you then take your clay, and carefully, you're going to put it inside the Walmart bag, okay? Then, instead of tying the Walmart bag, you're going to wrap it around your pottery. When you get it to here, you're going to use a piece of masking tape and you're going to secure it onto it. Then using a marker or a pen, you're going to write your name on the tape. If you don't write your name, we won't know whose clay it is. Then you'll set it on the appropriate cell shelf with your class and then you'll wait till the next time to come in for your project. Now, make sure that we don't have any of it, uh, air getting into it, because then it won't keep for you. So then next, when I come back, let's pretend I'm ready for the next day, I'm going to open up my clay, being very careful so I don't squish it. And then I'm going to get ready to start working with it at the next time. Now, I talked about smearing the coins, coils. You can leave the coils as a decorative kind of pattern if you would like to, or you can smear it and make it smooth. If you leave the coils, just make sure you don't have any gaps inside of it and keep that in mind when you're doing it. So to smear them, what I'm going to use is my popsicle stick. And just like I smeared the base, I'm going to kind of go in here and I'm going to work the coil into each other. Now be careful. This is a part where it's really easy to kind of make one side really skinny and the other side not. Now you notice how I'm turning the pot around and I'm gently scraping or kind of smooshing the clay together. I don't want to do all one side at one time because then I would have uneven. This works really nice if we had like a little thing we could spin it on. And that's the theory behind actually throwing clay on the wheel. You're kind of just letting the clay shape itself by applying little pressure, not too much, but you do need to apply some. And you could start to see how it's smoothing together in there. And you're seeing your pottery come together. All right, so I'm getting that clay in there. I'm smearing it together. Okay. 
Now, to do the outside, it's the same process, and I'm going to kind of turn it upside down, and this kind of helps me keep it flat as well. So I'm going to take this and smear it together. 